Hey there, so it's been uh, eight days since the UTMB 2022 race, and I just wanted to do this post-race recap to finish off the series. Uh, some of you may know if you followed along, and thank you for following along, that uh, I didn't finish the race. Uh, my Instagram caption, I think, typed it out, summarized it. I dropped out at the 50-mile mark, 80K, so just under halfway into the race in the middle of the night. It was like 4 in the morning. Uh, and I just want to say, you know, I really wanted to finish. I don't take DNF slightly. That's do not finish. Uh, cause I want to honor the race and just having the privilege of, of being there, having the support, the sponsor support, especially from Hoka, uh, but also, you know, Camelback Chorus, Spring Energy, to name a few and Sandy, uh, and some friends from Boulder, shout out to the Gnosis. Uh, you know, I wanted to honor the race and, and finish no matter what, except I will drop out if it's a big, uh, health threat or it's going to set me back health wise in a very serious way and that's what i i felt like uh what was happening so i'll walk through the race but uh kudos to all of you that finished i met so many amazing people that did that took part in some of the utmb races if not utmb itself and they persevered they crossed that finish line uh, again it's not something i take lightly to drop out of a race and not finish um you know i usually i'd say okay you know what i could do this i'm gonna do it no matter if it takes 25 hours or 35 hours, I do want to honor the race and finish. But I was in so much pain at that point, and we'll get into that, that I decided to pull the plug uh, halfway through. And so my race ended in Cormier, Italy. You could see the picture from the aid station there. I'll give photo credit to the photographers and you know people that had other uh, media from out the course, as well as Steven Ganoza, check out his channel, uh, for some of these clips that you're about to see in the B-roll. But uh, you know, going into the race, I was nervous. I you never feel fully prepared for these things, but I thought, you know, I'd done the soft UTMB. I've been on the course. I finished this race in 2017, uh, and so you know what to expect, and sometimes that almost makes it harder, I think, mentally. Uh, and of course, physically, you know, the legs are feeling pretty good, still suffering some of that back hip issues, um, and, you know, not training. You never, you don't want to overtrain, but you don't want to undertrain, and it's hard to get that specific quad pounding, but I felt really good about that and how my legs felt. And so, you know, the race started off, you're running, I ran like a 6.20 first mile. I was probably in like 100th place at that point. All the top guys are out sub six minute mile pace. So like sub four minute kilometer pace, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. Cause you have a, a my pack was probably close to five pounds fully loaded with, with all the fluid and gels and all the gear you have to require. And everyone has to carry that required gear. But the weather was looking iffy originally. We thought it was going to rain. We thought it might be kind of cold. Like in 2017, it was quite rainy and cold. So I was worried about having to put on my jacket and stuff. Never had to do that. It was perfect conditions. It actually was really nice. I was sweating a little bit, getting a little thirsty, uh, but nothing too crazy. It was a really comfortable temperature, especially for running fast. And running fast we were. Uh, and it didn't rain on me. Uh, at least in the 10 hours I was out on the course, it didn't rain all night, never had to put on the rain jacket, was wearing a t-shirt and very comfortable temperature wise. And it also wasn't muddy. It had rained a little bit during the CCC and, and the day before in certain areas around Mount Blanc, but it was really good, fast conditions, really comfortable temperature. Can't complain there. I was right where I wanted to be. I was hitting my splits uh, even a little faster than I thought we'd be. But I think because the leaders went out so fast, you know, Killian and Jim and Zach Miller and, and guys like that, even the top women were out. Uh, I was actually with uh, the, the woman that ended up winning, um, Katie Scheid, who was out really fast because um, we were still running six minute miles or so for the first three miles down towards La Zouche. Split, I think about 36 minutes down there, which was on the faster end of what I wanted to, but you know, staying comfortable, trying to be smart, staying maybe in 30th, 40th place overall, uh, with a lot of guys that I really respect who some finish have finished, you know, in the top 15, top 20 over the years, even top 10. So, uh, you know, a lot of Hoka teammates, a lot of good energy, perfect weather. Like I said, feeling really good, trying to stay smart with the nutrition, spring energy gels were going down. Well, I was drinking enough. Um, and I was saving my quads on the downhill. So I felt really good. Uh, even splitting two, I think it was 252 through the contamine, which is, you know, 19.4, 19.5 miles in, almost 32K in, put on the headlamp, Lecontamine, Sandy was able to get in there. It was kind of a hectic aid station, hard to access, but, um, you know, through status and having some connections, 
we were able to get uh, Sandy was able to make it there in time for me, which is always a, a time crunch. Uh, and a lot of people cheering along the way. They had this great Hoka glow tunnel after that before we start the big climb out of La Contamine uh, on the biggest extended climb of the course and if the flashing lights and everything. So much Hoka support out there uh, well, with all the sponsors. And yeah, it was just really exciting. There was this tunnel. It was like Tour de France style fans just screaming. I think I got a video clip uh, there to show you really exciting to see and something that was really special, great memory. Heading into that night, uh, and yeah, like I said, I was, things were going really well. The legs were feeling strong. Power hiking technique still probably needs a little work, especially at the lower. I, I call it a douche grade, but you know, I practiced on really steep stuff, but I forgot how much runnable stuff there is with the poles and it dawned on me, maybe I should do more cross country skiing in the winter. Anyway, I digress. Things are going well, really through the first 55 K 35 miles, uh, hitting splits that I wanted to hit and being in really good position, not losing position, passing a few people here and there. Uh, about four hours into the race, I'd say, well, five hours into the race, uh, the lung pain came on pretty strong and fast. And I was having some chest pain kind of between my spine and my heart. I'd say that becomes quite debilitating and kind of crippling uh, because, you know, I'm dealing with a little leg fatigue by then. You're dealing with, uh, you know, the fatigue of running 55K, 60K with a decent amount of climbing. And you know what's ahead. But yeah, there in the middle of the night, uh, the breathing problems really clamped down on me a lot more quickly and more severely than I even felt in Verbier, the Verbier Marathon or even at, at the Canyons 100K. So I had this searing pain kind of across my diaphragm and chest, uh, and it just basically shut my lungs down. And I was breathing very hard. I think Megan Hicks from Iron Far was out there in one of those climbs out in the middle crossing into Italy, and she said she could hear this whistling sound coming out of my lungs. I don't remember that, but I guess I was wheezing, so to speak. And it felt like I was having a pretty bad sort of asthma attack, and I just my pace drastically slowed at that point. Um, it also kind of got me feeling pretty nauseous, I think, because I was struggling to get air in and I was losing my position in place. It's very frustrating, but you know, I could gut out the pain of, of skeletal muscular fatigue and blisters and chafage and, you know, even throwing up or having GI distress. I think that's kind of par for the course in an ultra. And of course, you will be breathing hard on the uphills, even when power hiking uh, and you get muscle pain and, and failure like that. But massive dehydration, again, average things in an ultra, especially after seven or eight hours. But what I couldn't deal with, and maybe it's because I'm getting weaker mentally over the years or it's this new thing, is that extra layer of the lung stiffness, the lung burning, the searing pain with each breath uh, that makes it very hard for me to breathe and move, especially as fast as I, as I used to be able to do uh, before the pulmonary embolism. And uh, I'm not sure if it's the scar tissue or just my asthma is more sensitive now since having uh, those health issues last year, but I just, I could not deal with that. And it was quite painful. Even on the downhill coming into Cormier, I was all cramped up. Uh, and you know, side stitches are normal in ultras usually, but it's like I get these really strong side stitches that, that stay with me for hours and hours. So the pain was really debilitating and I, I wasn't sure what was going on and I feel like I need to see a doctor now still. That'll be the next step is getting some, some uh, hopefully some more answers with some medical care uh, that I might have to wait for. But uh, that was ultimately what led me to the decision to just pull the plug and stop in Cormier. I made it there. I wanted to make it there closer to nine hours, low nine hours, but I think it was closer to actually 10 hours by the time I made it into Cormier. I was slowing pretty drastically in that last 10K. I think you could see uh, the Strava data there. So, you know, it was a really tough emotional time. Late in the morning, you know, it's three in the morning, four in the morning, Sandy's there with all my supplies. Uh, our friends are there, the Ganozas, and, you know, I just... I wanted to finish at all costs and, and honor the race. And there's so many great competitors and people uh, that I know had to suffer through two nights and made the finish line. And congrats uh, for that because, you know, in 2017, I had a rough go and I, I mustered a finish barely at this course. But it's, it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing. And, you know, we get these different challenges. Everyone faces challenges in, in life and in running and training. And, of course, during a race, there's a lot of problem solving like that. And, you know, I, I needed more answers, I think, uh, especially with my lungs, because the legs were still feeling pretty strong um, and things were going pretty well. I didn't think I went out too fast, but 
again, if the body can't handle it, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough thing. And uh, it's not something I take lightly. Again, to honor this, this position of privilege, to be able to tow the starting line, to have this opportunity, to have the sponsorship support, uh, and the support of viewers like you and all these cool people I met across uh, the community, the ultra trail running community, and even on social media. I really appreciate all the well wishes and comments. And again, congrats to everyone that took part or finished or helped crew. We're spectating out there. I uh, met so many wonderful people. So I do want to keep going forward in this sport. At the same time, I, I do run for health and I want to stay healthy. And I've realized health is wealth. And ultimately, I think I need some more answers. Um, trying to get into some special doctor appointments. I don't, I'm not sure how long it's gonna take, if it's gonna be a matter of weeks or months. I'm actually still traveling back to Colorado uh, with Sandy. We have a little layover here in, in Ohio, visiting some family and uh, it's nice to relax and take some time off. Um, hence why this video is coming out so late. But uh, I do wanna get back into running again and hopefully maybe get in one more event before this year ends. Uh, yet to be determined still, but I do feel like uh, I have more racing left and I want to keep doing these videos and sharing this journey along with you guys as well as posting on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, social media, Facebook, uh, at Sage Canada, across all those. And yeah, just really, uh, you know, hope to bring some more positive energy and some progression again in this sport because it's, it's brought back a sense of normalcy, so to speak, just being in Chamonix again, seeing so many wonderful people, towing the starting line as hard as it is. Uh, it's, it's more like it makes you think of the, the before times, uh, before, you know, COVID, but also before when, uh, things were going well, before our apartment burned down, before the health issues that I had. Um, but I, I need some answers, uh, with my lungs cause I want to stay safe and I want to make the right call of course. Um, but it might require some more professional treatment and, you know, you worry about the costs on that, but health is wealth again. So I'm really trying to get to the bottom of it and, and get some answers and be back to racing and training and trying to just be smart with it, but also enjoy the process because it is so rewarding. And thanks to all you uh, for helping me keep motivated and inspired to keep these videos going. More training talks coming your way. And again, thanks to everyone who submitted some B-roll. There are so many messages and stuff. I don't see a lot of them on Instagram. So if you tagged me, I'm sorry. The stories disappear after 24 hours and uh, yeah, it goes to like my spam folder. Same thing on Facebook too. So really sorry if I didn't get back to you. But again, I, I really appreciate all the support and the comments and the thumbs up and likes. Uh, just subscribing and following along here helps me out as well as Coach Sandy a lot. So stay tuned on our higher running coaching website. That is a business plug. We got some exciting announcements on there. And give Sandy a follow also. She was my rock star crew and support out there in Chamonix. Pretty busy, exciting week, but also really inspiring and something that hopefully we can move forward on. And again, yeah, it was a rough go. It's tough, that's life, that happens sometimes. Uh, I don't take the DNF lightly, believe me. It's uh, it's not something I, I like to talk about or, or have, have to have happen, but uh, you know, it, it does happen. And that's, I've met people, it's, you know, for whatever reason, you gotta be smart sometimes and, and pull the plug. It's not a matter of, of going death before DNF or whatever, uh, so. That's my stance on it. Maybe you disagree or agree, but uh, that's what happened. And I try to be honest and upfront and, and real with you guys. So that's all I could say really on that, but there will be more content coming this way. And thanks to all the Patreon supporters again for making this channel possible as well as shout out to title sponsor Hoka, keeping the dream alive as much as we can. Hope your training and racing and, and outdoor adventures are going well again. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for all your support on here, on the social media. Uh, it means a lot to me. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more via 2Max Productions.